and welcome to a small series on the theory and application of data assets in the Advanced Framework Core. This is for versions 4.0 and 4.1. Data assets are at the center of a number of important functionalities of a framework, including level management and the controls of the VR palm. The concept is very basic and they are mentioned frequently, so we decided to provide you with a short introduction, which is to be followed up with a selection of use cases. Let's get started. So what is a data asset? It's basically a template pooling information. For each kind of data asset used in the core, we created a primary data asset, or PDA for short, which serves as a template defining which variables are in the data asset. Schematically, the layout works a bit like this. A PDA serves as an empty template defining which variable types comprise the data asset. Each data asset is basically a primary data asset with all its variables filled with content. By the way, Unreal does not distinguish between data assets and primary data assets the way we do it. If you want to refer to a data asset in your code, you must choose primary data asset as variable type. Finally, data assets are assigned to actors or other entities and are referred to for content or for variable or set of variables. For the advanced framework core, we created four kinds of PDA which serve as template to create data assets for four different use cases. Level data assets pool all the information necessary to load a level. Panel data assets determine the content of a menu panel. Presets specify the VR pawns controls. And gesture data assets define the, a gesture in hand tracking by hand and finger position. Let's assume you want to create a data asset of any kind. You right click in the, on the content browser in the folder where you want to create it and select data asset under miscellaneous. Next, you are asked to choose the primary data asset. Let's choose panel for example's sake. Now the file is created. And when you open it up, it already shows the whole structure of the data asset ready to be filled with content. So what if you want to add a new variable to a data asset? Then you have to create a new PDA. You can think of the relation between what we call a primary data asset and what we call a data asset like the relation between a class and an instance. And like classes, PDA can have parent-child relationships. So let's assume you want to add a texture to the level data asset. First, we find the level PDA and create a child of it. Now we open it up. For clarity's sake, I will enable show inherited variables here. You can see it inherits all the variables of its parent. Now let's add the texture variable and include it under transition. And when we create a data asset now, we can choose the new PDA and have the texture variable here. Finally, to ensure that all your data assets are included in your build, you need to register all primary data assets in the product settings. This includes children of PDA, but not normal data assets created using a PDA. So let's open up the project settings and register our child of the level PDA. You find the asset manager under the game section. Here you open asset manager and primary data assets to scan. You probably will have a whole list of PDA already. Let's look at one shortly. You see it has a name, a few settings, and most importantly, two references to the PDA here and here. Now let's add your child PDA, our child PDA.
Here we go. Please make sure your list of PDA is complete before you build your application. A missing PDA, even if it's a child of a registered parent, can cause lots of problems in the build application. That's all I've got for today. Bye-bye and see you in the next video.